Hello, guys. Starting from today, I'm going to give this Chinese lecture on a weekly basis. So you may ask, well, there have been so many Chinese classes. What's the point of offering one additional Chinese class? And here is what I mean. In my classes, I'm trying to differentiate myself by focusing a wide range of topics. Because learning Chinese or learning any language, that is never ever a single dimensional task. It's always a multi-dimensional task. Learning a language will also mean that you are going to include some understanding of the corresponding history, geography, culture, even philosophy. So that's why in my lecture, I'm going to cover the topics well on top of characters, grammar, sentences, stuff like that. I'm also going to cover a lot of other topics, including say calligraphy, poems, novels, music, history, and evolution of Chinese characters. I'm going to include a lot of them. You may, you may want to say, all right, you know, learning Chinese, that's a, a tough task. I have to memorize a lot of things. And on top of that, I have to learn all these. Here is the story. To learn these items, to learn these topics, is not extra burden. On the contrary, it will help us understand the core contents that we are going to discuss. For example, here, for example, here, if I give you my, my card, I'm telling you, okay, memorize this person. If you just read my card, you repeat, okay, first name's Joe, last name's Kai. You repeat a few times, after a couple of weeks, you totally forget this person. But if we have the chance to hang out, to grab a cup of beer together, then you may understand more aspects of me. Okay, he's a short person with black eyes and chubby cheeks. He likes blue ribbon, stuff like that, stuff like that. So you know more about me, it's not easy for you to, to forget. Same story here. Take home message, learning language is never ever a one dimensional task. You are going to learn a little bit of everything, like geography, like philosophy. So one example, what is the relationship between, let's say, Chinese characters and geography? Here's the example. You may hear, have uh, heard about this, yin and yang. Yin means dark and yang means bright. They are, let's say, tai chi, taoism, fortune, luck, stuff like that. But also, geographically, yin means the north part of a mountain or the south part of water, like a river. And yang means the mountain south and water north. Why is that? Why is that? Look. This is our earth. China is here. Like the United States, China is located in the Northern Hemisphere. Here's the equator, meaning that the sun is shining from the, the south. If that happens, if that happens, let's look at this. This is the mountain, this direction, that's north. The sun is shining from the south. It means that the south part of a mountain is bright, while the north part of the mountain is darker. But for water, let's say a river, let's say a river, it has two banks 
in a canyon, for example. The sun is shining from the south. So the northern bank of the water is brighter, while the, the southern bank of the water is darker. So that is the reason why in means mountain north slash water south, and yang means mountain south and water north. One quiz. This two characters, Jiang Yin, it's a name, it's the name of a city. Jiang means a big river. It actually refers to the Yangtze River or Changjiang. And Yin, that's here. That's here. So is Jiang Yin located north, south of the Yangtze River? According to our discussion above, we know that it's located in the south part of the river. So the solution is B for boy. The solution is B for boy. Look, that's the, the link between Chinese characters and geography. And look, here's the map. This is the city of Jiangyin. And this is the Yangtze River. Not surprisingly, Jiangyin is located on the southern bank of Yangtze River. That's exactly what we mean. If you know this trick, it will help us understand and memorize the names, the characters. Another example, that's the relationship between Chinese characters and history slash philosophy. This character is Qian. This is the pin in. The number in the parenthesis refers to the tone. It's tone number two, Qian. It means money. It has a radical of, of metal. We will discuss this in detail later. And these are the pictures of the, the coins, of the coins. Now, let's try to take a look. A typical coin is made of copper. It's a circle with a square hole in the middle because that's for the convenience of, okay, you can use a string to tie a lot of coins together, pass through the, the, square, the square hole in the middle. But the story is, the story is, why we have a square hole in the middle? Why don't we have a, a circle two in the middle? So one popular explanation about this is it's coming from the philosophy or the understanding of science of ancient Chinese people because they believe in Tian Yuan Di Fang, which means that the heaven is round and the earth is square. So the heaven, the sky, that's a sphere. And the earth, that's a cube. That's a cube, which is hovering in the middle of the sphere. So if you understand that, if you know that, that will help us, again, understand and memorize the meanings. So that's why we are going to start with our discussion of the, the evolution of Chinese characters. Why the evolution of Chinese characters again? Because most of the Chinese characters, they have their origins. And the Chinese characters, they are related with, with one another. Nothing is isolated. You want to master Chinese. Maybe you have to memorize 1,000 or 2,000 Chinese characters. But a lot of them, most of them, they are connected with each other. They are related with each other. So if we know the, the intrinsic relation, it will be much easier for us to memorize and to understand. Wen zi, wen means pattern. 
the most ancient form of Chinese characters. They come from pictures. That's what people call pictogram. But details are to be discussed next week. But zi, zi means character. And this is the Asian format of a zi. What is that? On the top, that is the shelter. That's the roof. That means home. In the middle, in the middle. This character is actually zi. It means son or baby. So this character actually describes, okay, to give, to deliver a baby in the home. So what is the intuition? What is the implication? Zi actually means that, well, a lot of the characters, they are derived from something else. They are delivered by something else. All the characters, they are connected with each other. So that's why to learn, to know the rules behind is very important, is very important. So more specifically, we are going to discuss these different versions in the history of the evolution of Chinese characters. This is the earliest version of Chinese characters. It's called Oracle. It's called Oracle because the text, they are inscribed, inscript. They are written, they are carved on tortoise shells or on animal bones. Now, these characters, they can date back to the Shang Dynasty. That's about 1300 BC. Following the oracle, people are using the second version, bronze. It's called Jin Wen. Bronze inscription, that is an inscription carved on bronze wares. And the age is during the Shang and Zhou dynasties. So right here, this picture, that's the, the Shijiang pan. That's a bronze ritual basin, which is dated about 900 BC. The characters describe the virtues of the first seven kings of the Zhou dynasty. And now this is what people call small seal. These are the Chinese characters in accordance with Qin Dynasty's writing standards. Then it evolutes to what people call the official script, Li Shu. Now we can see that compared with small seals, the official scripts, scripts Li Shu, they are much simpler. They are much simpler. And they look more like what people call regular scripts. They are actually the standardized version of Chinese characters used nowadays. But this is the, the traditional Chinese, which is used in Hong Kong, in Taiwan. In mainland China, they're using a different version. It's called simplified Chinese. 